Hey everybody, Zach Movie Fan here, and I just wanted to say before the video starts that a large portion of my viewers aren't actually subscribed, so if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing. It's free, easy, and it really helps out my channel. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Desperation can do things to a pony. It can overwhelm us, slowly gnaw away at our soul, day by day until it's completely seeped through us controls us, makes us susceptible to its will. It could have all gone so well. It was almost a year ago when I'd come home from a long day at working on the market. Just like every day, my wife, my, my lovely charcoal bakes had been awaiting me at home, bearing that same heartwarming smile. Although, something had been off. The look on her face, the blush on her cheeks, and the thrilled anticipation in her eyes as she told me that she had some news for me. Pessimistic as I was, my mind automatically jumped to the worst conclusions. Was she sick? Had something happened to the house? Had the crows eaten the seeds again? But she had just laughed, a sound that had lifted my heart even after years of marriage, and commented on me always worrying my head so much. A brief shootout, then she had finally broken the news. It made me fall into my haunches. She was... She was pregnant. That had been quite the reveal for sure. Not that it couldn't be foreseen, but nevertheless, it sure wasn't among the things I'd been expecting. But at the time, the second she had said it, the second I'd known deep down inside that it was right. I loved her, and she had often hinted at her wish for foals. And really... While I knew that feeding a third mouth with what little farm had been yielding this past year, I knew that becoming a mother would make her happier than anything else in the world. And as long as she was happy, I was happy. Unfortunately, that had been the last happy moment I could recall. They didn't know what happened to her. No pony knew. Just like that. Overnight. Like it was but a simple cold, it had happened. My wife, my beautiful charcoal, had become sick. It started off with just a light coughing and a bit of nausea in the mornings. She hadn't even mentioned anything to me at first. And being the hard-headed fool I was, I, I hadn't even noticed how her condition had gone from good to bad to worse. She kept insisting that it was nothing major. Just a little cold, an upset stomach maybe or a light flu, and I, I'd taken it from her. Harvest season was coming closer, and I had both my hooves full with taking care of the farm. She offered to help me, but with her slowly growing belly and her ever worsening coughs, I swore I saw her cough up bile, but she would never admit anything. I insisted she'd stay inside, deciding to sacrifice our meager savings and hire a farmhand while she was recovering. It wasn't until a few weeks later that her symptoms became so bad, we could barely sleep at night from her tear-inducing coffin fits, and I could finally convince her to come with me to the next village and see a doctor. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out to be the remedy I'd been hoping for. They didn't know what it was. No pony. We had visited four different doctors all across the region. None had any idea what this mysterious disease could be, and it only got worse. Driven by desperation about my wife's ever-worsening condition, I had tried to expand my attempts onto more unconventional options, but Celestia helped me, none of it worked. I visited all the local faith healers and alternative medicine institutions. Heck, I even consulted a local zebra to see if she couldn't help. It was all in vain. My poor wife. The apple of my eye. The light of my life. She wouldn't. She. She wouldn't. Things only got worse. Even in those rare occasions when Charcoal would manage to sleep, if only out of sheer exhaustion, I would find no rest. Thoughts were keeping me up. Worries about her future about the farm, about her. It was late at night when I felt myself arising from our bed once again, unable to sleep despite standing on my last leg. 
my dear wife was passed out next to me, her breathing sounding rough, like she was constantly fighting for breath. I closed my eyes, averting my gaze, unable to bear the sight of my dear charcoal going through such ordeals. Like in a haze, I found myself walking over the window where the bright light of the full moon was pouring in, creating a rectangle of light on the wooden floor. I shook my head, my entire body aching from worry and sheer exasperation as I constantly found myself wanting to look over my shoulder again to check on my wife to see if she was still breathing. I drew in a choked breath, feeling tears well up in my eyes once again as I saw her body shake in a barely contained coffin fit. Oh dear Celestia, I whispered under my breath, my voice barely able to express the sheer agony my soul was feeling. What am I going to do? I asked into the emptiness, my sad eyes resting on the sleeping mare. I can't lose you. I closed my eyes, letting my head sink as Charcoal's coffin settled down again. The mare wrapping herself deeper into the blankets. A harsh fever had been plaguing her for several days now, and it tore my heart in two seeing her suffer like this. Celestia won't help you. I startled, my heart skipping a beat as I could suddenly hear a voice. My gaze darted around the darkened room, frantically searching for the origin. Charcoal? I heard myself whisper, my mind subliminally hoping that my dear wife had suddenly grown healthy enough to speak to me. But no, what I heard wasn't Charcoal's voice. It was a mare's voice, yes, but in no way comparable to the lovely chime my wife's voice carried. No, this voice sounded deeper, imposing, menacing. Do not be afraid, child. I am not here to bring harm upon you. The voice once again spoke to me, leading my ear to twitch as I frantically looked around the room. Who are you? I hissed under my breath, not wanting to awake my sleeping wife. What do you want from me? Come closer. The voice cooed leading the hair on my neck to stand on edge. The voice. I couldn't tell where it came from. It was like it was... like it was in my head. Bask in the glory of my light. My head darted around the room, heart pounding as I felt myself threatening to panic. Was I... was I hallucinating? Was the lack of sleep and sheer exhaustion causing me to hear things that weren't there? Don't be afraid. I once again could hear the voice, feeling as though it was originating right inside my brain. Come closer. The voice once again beckoned to me, single beads of sweat forming on my forehead as I felt fear's cold grip wrap itself around me. Quick steps carried me over to the window, my gaze darting from side to side to see if somebody was playing a sick joke on me. But there was nobody. No. The only thing I could see was, was, don't be ashamed, the sight of my power has left many mortals speechless. The moon, it was as if it was lit up by Celestia, the moon seemed to be twice, if not three times its regular size, and imprinted on its surface, the monument to Princess Celestia's power for the past 1000 years was the image of a mare. But not just any mare. Not Mare Moon. My voice, barely louder than a whisper, faded into the night. And suddenly, I could feel an all-new surge of emotions flow through me. Awe. Anxiety. But most importantly, fear. I'd been but a foal when I heard the legends about the Mare and the Moon. And truth be told, I'd never paid much mind to them putting it off as a ponytail one would tell to scare young foals. But this, this wasn't a mare's tail. This was real. I could sense a supernatural presence, could feel the aura of something far mightier than anything I'd ever seen around me as I stood in the moonlight. And my celestia, it filled me with fear greater than I'd ever known. Feeling myself tremble, ears folding back, I found myself wanting to turn and run, 
but seemed to be frozen in place. It was like, like my own legs wouldn't listen to me anymore. What a delight to see a mere mortal still recognizing me a thousand years later. The voice cooed in my head. The moon above me, seeming to light up even more. Do not be afraid of all. I have no intentions of bringing harm upon you. I merely swallowed, seeming unable to bring out even a single word. My mouth seemed fused shut. Lips refusing to part. Tongue unable to move. In fact, I can help you. Or rather, your beloved charcoal. The voice spoke. And I swore I could hear delight in her voice as it mentioned my infirm wife. Stay away from her! I wanted to scream, but was still painfully incapable of voicing my thoughts. I could hear the voice giving up amused laugh inside my head. If I wanted to hurt her, or any of you mortals, I would have already done so. The voice assured me, still sounding slightly bemused. But I see you are in despair. And I will offer you a bargain. A bargain you will find impossible to refuse. I could feel myself wanting to shake my head. No. No, this... this was wrong. Nightmare Moon was evil. Anyone foolish enough to be tempted by her would... Quiet. The voice in my head cut through my thoughts. And I was shocked to see my own thoughts inadvertently come into a halt. That voice... It carried such power, such regality, it seemed, it seemed near impossible for me to ignore it. She will die, the voice proclaimed. Those words, simple as they were, carried such cold-heartedness, such cold, calculating realism, that I could feel a shudder run down my spine, a new wave of tears flooding my reddened eyes. Very soon, in fact. No mortal soul can cure the disease she carries, and without a miracle, she will not live to see the sun rise again. I felt myself tear up further, my face contorted into a pained grimace. I wanted to yell at the voice, tell it to stop telling its wretched lies, to make it shut up and... You know it to be true, the voice declared softly, carrying no malice or spite. Just plain, cold clarity. Do not close your eyes to reality, mortal. I felt a choked gasp escape my throat. My entire body shivering. As it seemed to fight against what the voice was saying. This... This couldn't be true. There is no way that my... My dearest charcoal would... As if on cue, the mayor lying in our shared bed broke into another violent fit of coughing, the third one this night, and they seemed to get longer and longer. I swallowed, feeling my lip begin to tremble. She... she wasn't... she wouldn't... You can save her. The voice once again spoke in my head, though this time it sounded smooth, engulfing, tempting. It is not too late yet. I could feel tears really running down the side of my face, legs trembling from sheer desperation, as I wanted to put this off as just another hallucination, as much as I wanted to forget about all this and go back to bed, deep down. I... I knew I would be in denial. My dearest charcoal was on her last leg, and hope was rapidly dwindling. Slowly, my entire body shaken, I found myself raising my gaze, looking up at the brightly lit moon through tear-stained eyes. The mare and the moon seemed to smirk victoriously. Join me, the mare spoke, her mighty voice sounding sweeter and more tempting than ever before. Witness the uncontainable power of the night. Leave the shackles of mortality behind. The voice spoke, the moon seeming to shine brighter than ever, and she will recover. You will save her. My breath became shallow as I stared out into the night at the moon. Something seemed to come over me, to 
grab a hold of me. The moonlight itself seemed to surge through me, leading my muscles to tense up. For a brief moment, I felt more alive than I ever had before. This is but a fraction of my power. Nightmare Moon's voice thundered through my head as I felt the energy surge through me. I was feeling alive, stronger than ever. I could do anything. I could I could cure charcoal. I could No. No. For the love of Celestia, no. I felt my breath catching my throat as my body suddenly spasmed. Second thoughts overrunning and threatened to suffocate me. This was this was not Mere Moon I was talking to. The antithesis to Princess Celestia. To everything I'd ever believed in. I was about to make a deal with the devil herself. I gasped, opening my mouth to scream out my concerns, but my breath caught in my throat as my air pipe seemed to be crushed by an invisible force. Has Celestia not let you down? Has she not allowed your wife to grow sick in the first place? The calm, alluring voice of Nightmare Moon was now replaced by a vicious, almost feral hiss leading my ears to fold back in sheer awe as I found myself forced to stare at the moon's glaring light. This is your last chance for salvation, right in front of your eyes. How dare you deny it? I, I gasped, but my tongue seemed to be tied. I'm not... This is your last chance, mortal. The voice returned calmer this time, yet still with the tone of a stern ruler a teacher who had just reprimanded an insubordinate student and was now giving them one last opportunity to prove themselves. Accept this gift I am offering you, or watch her take her last breath before the sun will rise. My words caught in my throat. The mere mention of those words sent another shudder down my spine. Charcoal had fallen into another coffin fit behind me. Unable to turn around, I could only hear her coughing, wheezing. Fighting for breath. This was... This was wrong. This was wrong on so many levels. Heresy of the worst kind. But... But what shall I do? Shall I just stand there? Watch the love of my life die? Watch her life slip through my hooves like fine sand? My mind inadvertently went back to earlier. Earlier when Nightmare Moon had given me a glimpse of her power... Such might, such force, so many possibilities. I felt my heart seeming to come to a standstill for a few moments, leaving me only with a dead silence of my surroundings and the bright light of the moon shining down on me. Then, I accept. The words left my mouth before I even fully thought about them. Determination to save my dear charcoal was overwhelming. Hearing her struggle for breath, was agonizing to my poor ears, and I'd do anything, anything, to save her from this ordeal. It wasn't until a few seconds later that I heard the voice give a low, triumphant laugh. It sent shivers down my spine. Very well, immortal. Nightmare Moon spoke within my head, and I could feel the light of the moon shining down on me again, seeming to shine right into my soul. Accept this gift. I could feel the moonlight engulf me completely, power surging through my body, leading me to let out a low, ferocious growl. Leave behind the shackles of mortality. I felt a sensation of weightlessness overcome me as I felt myself being lifted off the ground. My hooves shaken as they lost contact with the floor, and I was lifted through the open window as if by magic. And become one with the night. I was floating, further and further upward. My body seeming too petrified to fight back or show any sort of resistance. The sounds of my wife fighting for breath became more and more distant as I was lifted into the night sky. The moonlight surrounded me, embracing me, engulfed me. My eyes grew wide as I watched my coat light up in the moonlight. My very fur seeming to glow in the pale light of the moon before, for a split second, a flash of unimaginable agony shot through my entire body. Pain, worse than everything I'd felt in my life combined, flared up within me, 
surging through my entire form, leading me to tear open my muzzle for a wordless scream as my very body seemed to evaporate before. In a flash, it was all over. My vision faded to black, and I could feel myself drifting away. Now, part of something new. Something bigger. Something stronger. Charcoal Bakes gave a soft, wistful sigh as she looked up at the night sky. Today was a full moon night, just like four weeks ago when he, when her husband had, had. She felt her throat getting tighter, the fear of falling into another coughing fit surging up in her mind, but was relieved as she felt herself only give a brief gasp. She didn't know. She didn't dare think about what had happened that fateful night her husband had disappeared. Part of her seemed to insist that he couldn't take the pressure anymore and had run off. But, no. She didn't know where he went. How he had disappeared. What she did know was that her sickness had disappeared. Almost overnight. Within a few days, her fever was entirely gone, and she was ready to pick up farm work again. And just a week later... She had given birth to a wonderful little filly. Without a doubt, the circumstances of his disappearance still left her filled with worry. And for some unknown reason, she had already found herself giving up hope of him ever returning. However, on nights like these, looking up to the brightly lit night sky with its countless stars shining down on her, she could feel him, feel his presence, feel his embrace. Feel him guarding over her and her daughter like a guardian angel. Charcoal gave a soft sigh, feeling a single tear run down her cheek as she took her gaze off of the full moon, turning away from the window to look after her daughter. Yes, he was with her, and he would be, for all eternity.